I'm not digging. No. Everyone, <laughs> welcome. It is the Fantasy Baseball Experience podcast for match up 16 this week. So we're looking at uh we still got four more matchups for playoffs. So we got four weeks of games for playoffs. I'm joined by the top scorer of the week, Austin Shipman, with over 300 points. Austin, how's it going? I'm doing well. Um, you know, it's, it's been a climb. I haven't been on the podcast in a while. It's good to be here. Yeah, I like your jersey. Uh, I don't think they actually wear that jersey, but I like it. And um, show everybody what you have for dinner. Um. Yeah, that's oh enough. oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I tell me you got the euro though, right? We stopped at Arby's. He got to um, be. Familiar. They said they said they're out of euros because it's a little bit too gay to get those. Uh, but, no, it's because you know. they're just flying off the shelves. And my other man here joining us, Brady, second week in the row, two hundred and ninety ish points, big scoring week for you. Uh, I felt like you had a big enough week. You simply had to be the other man on here. I like your background, Brady. What's up, man? Uh, nothing much, you know. Uh, there was just this little bit today where I thought I might be able to edge Austin out on points, but uh, not quite. Well, E2 is going to be here. I'd like to say my win streak finally snapped. It's finally off my shoulders, but yeah. I wouldn't have lost it to anyone else except for Hayden. It makes me feel good that they got it. Um, Judge is back. Woodruff's having rehab starts. There's a date set for Hunter Green to come back. So I'm on a fantasy high right now. I know I lost, but I am thrilled with the direction my team's heading. Um, For the podcast this week, we're kind of thinking of something to change up instead of talking about Brady and Austin's boring-ass teams nobody likes. So what we plan on covering is the trade deadline is here. Obviously, there's still two days left, so there could be a lot of hectic trades going on. It looks like the Mets are selling with Scherzer dealt, so maybe Verlander goes somewhere as well. Not sure about that. And we're also, playoffs aren't locked yet. But the whole bottom is at least two games out with matchups, uh, with four matchups left. So we're going to cover kind of the playoff bracket and look at the scope of things there. But Austin will start, cover your team real quick. Um, nothing crazy. Shohei Otani is the best baseball player to ever play baseball. I think you're aware of that. And I saw Hassan Kim, who you're also a big Asian Fantasian fan, slide into yeah, home plate yeah. James Shoulder. Are you worried about him at all? Um, I don't I don't worry about Asian baseball players too much. They're usually the most durable human beings to ever touch the plates. Um, but um, you know, we'll see how it goes. I picked up Tim Anderson, so yeah, we, I got, saw we, we got a little I, we got a little action on the bench if we need it. I chuckled and when I saw that. Look, look, he look, look, look. He, he hit his first home run this year. I Last did see somewhere where like before that he was batting like 370 since the all-star break. So I guess he's been playing well. well. So we'll see how it goes. And then you know, Pete Alonzo, Scooball did well. So it was a good week. Yeah, you were over. Uh, Austin's professional drywall hanger. He's been in my house this week, helped me hang up drywall. And we're sitting there, just keep screwing this drywall. And we're having the hardest time finding these freaking studs. And it turns out, Austin, you were the stud the whole time, man. 304 points this week. That's a beautiful, beautiful. Wow. Game. So, hey, your team keeps up strong. I, gosh, <laughs> eyes of cringe. Yeah, Brady, I don't have any bad, bad jokes for you uh, sitting there. You're going to squeak to eight and eight. Uh, you're looking safe for playoffs now, the way things are shaping yeah, up. Yeah, I, I just looked at my matchup, so I would say I got two. I got Austin next week, so uh, I could go either way. And then I got Kensley, who's been hot, but then I, I, I finish up with uh, Logan and Benton. So I think we're I think we're good. I think – I think – Try that coin. If Logan and Benton were both to beat you and they get hot all of a sudden. That, it is true, but – Depending on how things shake out, I win tie. I don't think I win ties against low. Well, I guess it's head to head. It's not points, isn't it? I I don't know. I I don't know who I beat in the earlier matchups in the year, so I don't know how that would shake out. Well, that's interesting. Uh, we'll cover the playoff brackets a little bit later. Do you have an exciting Sunday of baseball? The Braves game was exciting, but I felt like it was a really boring day. My team stunk it up today, so yeah, I, I, I was a little concerned. I was a little concerned when the day started. Kevin, all Kevin's batters were in like 
the early games and he got off to like a massive like comeback on me and like I was sitting there and yeah. in the first inning like Maeda and Verlander both a lot of run and like Kevin was within like 10 and Blake Snell hadn't pitched yet and I was like oh god please no but uh, I um, did fail to mention down. thank you for beating Kevin Kevin's going on a three loss streak yeah we're we're bumping him down those rankings this week yeah. my bad for last week sorry yeah nobody likes that kid third loss in a row Acuna Lingus is getting out here. Dude, I did notice. I was like, man, who has Yelich? Because Yelich is like the yeah. MVP this year. For, Ridiculous. So him having Yelich and Acuna is insane for his team, especially getting yeah. like, like the 100th pick. I mean, that's two players right there. You got you got Yelich and Blake Snell at the beginning of the year. You had no hope for. And I, I don't know. It's just it's working out. Yeah. I, I, maybe like I had thought about this maybe a week ago, but, uh, you know, he had been dealing with those like back problems and, you know, maybe he's finally over it. So maybe that's why he's sucked for the last three years. Yeah. I thought he was just cycling off of steroids and that's why he started stinking, but maybe it was just his injury. <laughs> could also, could also be the case. I mean, he was I literally mean, the- like, I mean, he was a good prospect coming up for the Marlins and he was solid. And he went to the Brewers and had like a 60 home run year out of nowhere. So I was just like, yeah, he's juiced. But anyways, we're going to move to our trade deadline talk. Um, we're going to call this help or hurt. We're going to go through. I'll ask each one of y'all about a specific player. And if you think it's going to help or hurt their fantasy value the rest of the way. And I was thinking about it. Most likely all of these trades are going to help their value because guys getting dealt are going to be going to winning teams in exchange for prospects. So, but anyways, I will give uh Austin you're a top scorer I'll tee it up for you Max Scherzer is leaving the cursed Mets and he's going to the Rangers but yeah. something I do want you to also keep in mind is that Logan is on the outside of the playoffs I don't think there's any way he's getting in so is this trade enough of an impact for him to like sweep the next four games get into the playoff and make a run or is he not worried about it I don't know. You know, I think I think Max Scherzer. I think you know he could easily come in, pick it up, and just absolutely slaughter some people. So I, I really don't worry about it. It's 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 a sad day for the New York Mets franchise. Um, I mean the 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 president. I just saw an interview with him, and and you know. Verlander was talking, and it's just, you know, it's sorry in there right now. So I, I think it can only be a good thing for Scherzer for, uh, to get out of that environment. I'm definitely not a Braves fan because that's just a horrible franchise as well. But, you know, we'll move swiftly to the D-backs. Yeah, you jumped <laughs> ship from those Mets real quick, didn't you, this year? <laughs> well, uh, we'll be back for Acuna Jr., Jr., whatever his little brother <laughs> I'll mention one thing really quick on the the Scherzer angle, and you know he he has a good win loss currently, so I think that's obviously the thing you would look for going to the better team. And his win loss is already pretty decent. He's got what nine wins and four losses. So that's, I mean, that's pretty good. But I mean, he's one of the best pitchers of all time. Yeah, no, but that's what I'm yeah. saying. So like, assu- assuming he pitches the same, just on the Rangers now, I don't know how the defenses stack up. You know, I know the Phillies I mean, are terrible, I, but other than that, I don't know how teams' defenses play. I was seeing like the ballpark doesn't help him at all. Like it's doesn't. worse for him. But I mean, that could be the only thing because I'm pretty sure he's been giving up home runs left and right this year. I, I know there was small rumors that Verlander would go to the Reds, and I was just like, please no. Yeah, I mean, after the interview, I just saw with him. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm interested to see if the Reds do buy. They have a lot of prospects, and they're kind of in the hunt if college. if they buy they shouldn't buy like justin verlander like that's for a team that's like they at least got to have someone that's you know gonna be around i don't know yeah. that's i think more so an astros slash like dodgers angle yeah so i'm i'm with y'all scherzer i don't see a huge impact i don't think he'll lose a game for the rest of the year i mean the rangers are scoring like the braves are you get a leg like that i mean you're gonna pitch him every week he's gonna get a win even if it's a mediocre outing, he's probably going to get 10 points. So, uh, anyways, but I don't think it's fantasy relevant because 18% chance is going to go down after this week. So <laughs> not gonna be in the playoffs. That's tough. 
Uh, Brady, I'll let you start then. Lucas Giolito going to the Angels from the White Sox. And this is a pretty good upgrade, but I know a lot of people are bugging out about the six-man pitching rotation thing. And Yeah, so what does the higher chance for wins outweigh the no more two starts, basically? Now, obviously, that really only matters. Like, there's only four weeks left, right? So there's only a handful, maybe a guy that maybe has one two start left, right? So it's but if they catch him in a playoff week, that's yeah, exactly. Two, if it happens to be the first week of the playoffs, you know, he, you know, most likely won't have that option now. W- whether it would fall like that, who knows? But I mean, because it's not the Angels still absolutely blow games though. Yeah, so I mean, like, the, the Angels are not good, so I don't. I don't yeah, see this like really I, I helping. think I almost. I mean, I guess I I would probably just take it as a negative, to be honest. So, no more two starts or the op- opportunity for a two start, maybe in that first playoff week, and then you know sometimes changes of scenery don't help. You know, he's been pitching well yeah. compared to the last few years, so you know sometimes change of sceneries do like. We'll talk about him a little bit, like Lance Lynn. It can't get it can't get worse than what it already is. So, like you know, change of scenery, sure. But like you know, did, like he's uh, pitching well. I would just wouldn't want him to move. I was listening to John Boy Media's with Chris Rose talking, and he was talking about trades. Like you know, everyone talks about is it better pitcher park? Is it all this? Or are they going to be in a six man rotation? Yada yada. But this dude, like somebody like Giolito is a grown-ass man that's been in Chicago his whole life. His kids are going to school there. His whole family's there. He's got a house there. And now he's got to move, and he's playing in L.A. So he's not really upgrading his team. His rotation's bad. And now he's being moved from his family and, like, all that shit. We look at it so much of analytics and crap like that, but at the end of the day, he's probably miserable going to uh, L.A. And everyone's like, oh, he's a California kid, blah, blah. It was probably going to take a year for him to get settled in there, so. I don't like the move. Is he a free agent or is uh is he like under contract? I got no idea. I know the White Sox See. are just fire sailing everybody. Who's he's going to? He's got to go, right? I you know, I'd be down for that. I'd be down for that because like, well, Giolito, like I said, he's had kind of a bounce back year somewhat. Like Cease has just been he's been bad, so or badish. He's been better towards the latter half of this year, but I don't know. I think. The change of scenery slash more upside for wins for him could be could be good, but I'll cover you know, people get Sorry. the uh, next two trades here because they're on the same team. Carlos Santana is going to the Brewers, who's on Kinsley's team, and Jordan Montgomery is going to the Rangers, who's also on Kinsley's team. Carlos Santana, I don't see a huge impact. He did have a home run today. Uh, it was off of AJ Smith Shawyer, who was throwing meatballs for a lot of the time. So I don't see a Carlos Santana change, but. I think Montgomery from the Cardinals to the Rangers is huge because we know the Cardinals suck. We know Montgomery is a mediocre pitcher. He was really good for the Yankees. And I really think that the Rangers can – I mean, you're going to get four earned run wins with the Rangers. So I think that's a big yeah. up. I mean, he's he's 6-9 and nine currently, so – and he's only got a 4-3-4 four, or three, four ERA. So, I mean, you would assume yeah, I mean, if he had been on the Rangers yeah. this entire year, he'd probably be – you know, be like at least nine and six, in which cases, you know, points for a game are substantially different. Mm-hmm. You have all the uh, hit the IL today, I think, right? With a forearm strain too, which is like the oh, so he's toast. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know, step in, maybe kind of carry some weight. I mean, it's got to be like lifting <laughs> a sixty-pound vest off yourself. I'm, leaving the I'm St. surprised. Louis Cardinals. I mean, I'm surprised the Rangers are going for it this hard. Like, I don't feel like they're going to get it done. Like if they still had like uh DeGrom around and whatnot and like like you said, maybe uh Eovaldi, you know, he's hurt now, like I'm surprised they're going that hard because like I don't think they're getting it done. I think the moves they made are big enough though to give them a shot. Before there was no chance. But yeah, if Eovaldi hey, can come back and he's pitching, he pitching. And Scherzer, I mean, you're talking you got the best arm in the league, arguably. But doesn't he always like false like noodle arms at the end of the year? Last like three years. I feel like he's noodle armed. Maybe he won't though. You got to take a shot on somebody. I don't, and I don't know. Pitching good. Not that we think John Gray is a World Series pitcher. I understand. I'm just saying they're making the right moves to make it up. So mm. I agree. And and uh, 
Um, they um, they got some. Uh, I I don't think we're gonna. They're not fantasy relevant, but they traded for some relievers too. I think. Yeah, they did. Um, they got some. It's not a closer. They got some other relievers yeah. in that deal. And I saw Aaron Hicks from the Cardinals went somewhere, but I don't. I, I don't look. Know. I wasn't too concerned. Austin, I'll let you cover this guy real quick for me. Uh, Ahmad Ahmed Rosario, he's been on waivers. Uh, he can only hit left hand pitching, and he sucks against right hand pitching. But he went to the Dodgers. Am I going to get any kind of worth out of him, or do I need to drop him? Uh, that's just a waste of time to even talk about him. I mean, mm-hmm. Is that that guy that kind of looks like he's Middle Eastern? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean he's yeah, he's a waste of time. I mean, I mean the biggest trade that's happened is Lance Lynn to the Dodgers. I mean, this is going to be one of the biggest turnarounds y'all have ever seen in a in an MLB season. I mean, I mean he is he's going to be starting. I think it's Tuesday against the A's. He's getting a nice easy start. Right I off. can't believe he's at even on your team. Look, I'll, I'll let Brady. Not even going listen, above one. I'm not going to let you gaslight yourself on that trade, Brady. I'll let you jump into the Lance Lynn Dodgers trade while Austin drinks out. I dog. mean, heck, if I'm Austin, I mean, first off, I'm probably not rostering Lance Lynn, but since he is, I mean, I'm all about it. You go to the Dodgers, who, you know, they're kind of I'm starting him to be, next week against you, Brady. They're kind of known to be pit, pitching whispers, so there's that. And then, you know, obviously. You know, wins upgrade. He's been so bad that change of scenery. He, what is he going to be worse than a six ERA? Thir- Thirteen ERA over the last seven days. But uh, I mean, he can't get worse. So I'd take it as a plus. Dude, my freaking World Series baseball bat cup just split down the side, and I got my sixteen ounces of water on my desk over here. We got to play through. It's fine. Life will go on. Um, last trade, David Robertson goes to the Marlins. I'll cover that real quick for Mitchell. Um, I don't think it's a huge upgrade. He's going to be a great closer for the Marlins, but he was already a closer for the Mets. So I think the Mets are – I know they haven't played as well. I mean, they traded, they traded him away. I mean, it's just disgusting to be a Mets fan. Just yeah. disgusting. Verlander yeah. to the Astros inbound. He's going back. I hope not, dude. I hope the Rangers. Give me Verlander to my The Rangers dude. get another arm. I'm so Good God, Cody. please don't Heart. send Verlander to a team that can't score runs. We are actually going to a uh, Rangers game Saturday. Me and Cody are, so we got a work conference out in San Antonio. We're going to flying into Dallas to catch a Rangers game. So I am stoked for that next weekend. Um, let's move forward. We sat enough talking about trades that have nothing to do. Let's get a playoff outlook on the league because this is exciting stuff. This is what we've all been waiting for. It's coming down to it. Here we are, playoff projections. Benton and Cody are sitting at the 9 and 10 spots, and they're both taking a loss this week. So they are going to be two games out from making the playoffs. And Alex and Logan, uh, Austin, I'll let you talk about Alex and murdering his hopes and dreams real quick if you want to. Well, I mean, I wanted him on the podcast just just to really, you know, bring reality to what his team is. I mean, last week there was a lot of hope. I remember watching last week how much hope there was on this podcast for his team. And, and man, that is drastically changed. He played a real I mean, team this week. I mean, it was swift. And, uh, you know, we'll just have to see him next year. He can get ready for football. And, uh, you know, hopefully hopefully the injuries don't pile up on them next time. So now that we'll admit those bottom four are out of the way, I get looking like I'm getting Mitchell week one. Well, Hayden, so he'll have the same record as me. There's a good chance. You and Hayden There's so much that can happen two. and all that. You and Hayden yeah. will be one and two, I think. I don't think – the middle section, I think, is going to be – because. Me, Austin, and Mitchell are going to have the same record. Will lost. So we're one game behind Will and one game behind Kevin. So, you know, I think anything there can – the seeding's very up for grabs. Yeah. Um, I would – I mean, having Mitchell and Brady at seven and eight is gross. I don't really want either of them. I guess, I mean, I'd rather have – I mean, who, who's the team you would most want to face currently? 
I mean, it's kind of a gross playoff, to be honest. I mean, I would say I would probably say Mitch is who I would want to play. Yeah. Like the teams I'd want to face out of that are going to be Mitchell and Will. His team's kind of been. His team's skidding. But like, your team's hot. <gasps> Austin team's hot. Hey, Jose Abreu hot. top scored for Will this week. 26 <laughs> points. <laughs> That's fucking gross. Um, Abreu and Alex Cobb. Good God. Yeah. So I'm, I guess Mitchell, yeah, but I really think Will's down there, even though his record's going to have him as a higher seed. But I don't want to face Brady at Austin. Obviously, Kevin's got a good team, even though he's skinned. We don't want to face Kevin. Kinsley's playing out of her freaking mind. And Hayden's up there with the top seeds now. Hayden snuck up all season on me, dude. I did not know that he was this guy. And now all of a sudden, he's tied for best record in the league after this week. CJ Abrams top scored for him this week. There's there's a yeah, weird. I mean his top scores are confusing. CJ Abrams, Nico Horner, and Gold. I mean, Nico Horner's been good on the season, right? Yeah, he's got over three. Yeah, he has. So that's what I had to watch all week is him just uh and I didn't have any good pitch. I mean, I don't want to make up excuses. He beat me, but look, team's back. All right. I had a lot of guys get injured. CJ Crone missed out all week because of a stiff back on like Saturday and he skipped this whole freaking week because of it. So that one pissed me off. I could have played judge instead and judge hit a bomb on his game coming back and Crone didn't do shit. So anyways, that's the playoff outlook. I think the bottom four are pretty much set far and anything crazy. Obviously we'll see if we eat our words in the upcoming weeks, but it's going to be a tight top eight. Like I said, there's not really anyone I'm dying to face out of there. I mean, do y'all think there's a obviously weak team? I would uh, say it's got to be, it's got to be Mitchell and Will. Yeah, so those are some, those are some. Kinsley just like, teams. I'm still not the biggest fan of her team, but they keep scoring high, and it's just like, well, I mean, her hopes and dreams are gonna be smashed next week, so don't. Worry. I know, but it's it's like Carlos Santana and Ian Happ are her top scorers this week. Like, what? Yeah. Like how how is Carlos Santana a thing now? I I feel like he's been like useless for like a few years. Hey, he's on Just... the Brew Crew now, baby. I get yeah. Poor Pirates. Yeah. Scott Barlow, high risk, dude. I'm excited to see this trade deadline. There's a trade deadline show. Dude, should we just do like a live five-hour podcast on the trade deadline Monday night, Tuesday night? <laughs> sure. Uh, right, how about this real quick? Who do you think is going to get traded of the the big name big names that have been rumored? Who do you think is getting traded? I don't know much about... Uh, I know there's a lot of like Soto smoke going around. Are the Padres going to sell? How about that? Snell hater. They lose today. I got no. They were beat. no. Blake Snell pitched. So they probably won. <laughs> okay, okay, guy. <laughs> I mean, he <laughs> won. Let's see here. He uh, Blake Snell went five no hit innings. So you know, or no earned run innings. Sorry. Let's see MLB biggest trade targets. I think Verlander gets traded. If you, you traded Scherzer, just dump the other 40-year-old. Yeah. If I got Flaherty on my team, everyone says the Cardinals have got to dish people, so Flaherty was supposedly the big one to go out of the uh, Cardinals mm-hmm. situation. So, and then they're not trading Arenado, right? Hey, they came out and said they're not trading Arenado, which... How I mean, isn't Goldschmidt like 35? Shouldn't they just trade him? He is old, but I don't know his. Oh, and CJ Crone's supposed to go. I got a few guys that might pop. Yeah, up. I assume the Rockies are going to dump anyone they can. Or I'm sorry, the Rockies should, but they won't because they're the Rockies. And the Cardinals but... are the same way. They're very conservative with their players and everyone. I was surprised. I mean, I think Montgomery was a shoe in to go, but I wouldn't be surprised they hold on to Flaherty just because they always like milking their people forever. Yeah. So. So I think it, it probably just comes down to the Padres then, whether or not they decide to sell. I would assume they're not, just because it'd be such a... I mean, I think it's a bigger disappointment than the Mets. Yeah, dude, when you watch their team, and it's like, oh, Tatis, 
Oh, Machado. Oh, Juan Soto. Oh, Xander Bogarts. You're like, does this fucking end? Well, you just think about that, and then, like, they've gotten this out of Blake Snell this year, and they're still not going to make the playoffs? Like, And Hassan Kim. Yeah, and Hassan Kim's playing great, and Joe Musgrove's been great, too. Like, I guess I don't know how their U Darvish has been kind of bad, but... I can't believe Brady just fell for your Asian... <sighs> Look, when he picked him up those few weeks, those, I don't know, a month and a half, two months ago, and he's like, he's been playing well. I was like, okay, sure, it's Hassan Kim, but hey. Well, it's been good. He tore his labrum today, sliding into hump. So bummer for him, but that's tough. Jammed uh, right. We'll shoulder. go ahead. We'll move over to the power rankings. What's the best way you guys want to do these real quick? You just want to alternate? Yeah, we can just alternate. Austin, you want to start at one or 12 top score? Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's start it, I guess, at the bottom. All right. At 12. Who is your, you know, you know what to do. Sir, you want me to keep track of it over here? So at 12, um, I mean, this is tough to watch this year. It's, uh, it's, uh, who's your Vladdy coming in with another yeah. loss? Uh, is this seven in a row? Uh, dude, I don't know. Yeah, it'll be seven. It'll be seven in a row. I mean, it's getting like it, my dad in whitey tidies. It's tough. And you look at the team. There's some names, but it just it doesn't it doesn't look like there's much hope, and uh, it's a lot of underperformers. Uh, I he guess honestly wasted you know. too much breath even talking about his team at this point. It's, yeah. So yeah, he's yeah, that, he's, he's checked out. Yeah. Um, Brady, number eleven, sir. Uh, he who will not be named um, coming in at eleven. Okay. We'll spare him the. Uh, we'll spare him. Yeah. Poor guy. Rest in peace. Uh. Number nine. Ten. Ten, whatever I'm at. Uh, I'll give it that to Logan. I don't see Logan getting out of the playoffs at all. His team. Big win this week, though. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. 18% chance it's going to be down to like seven after this. So, I got him at ten. Who you got at nine, Austin? Um, At nine, you know, I think there's someone that makes sense, obviously, with the playoffs we're talking about. But power rankings-wise, I just put Will's team there. We'll just put him at nine. Okay. It's sheesh. It's getting um, dunked on. He's not even there to freaking defend himself anymore, man. I mean, I don't know. Just, just a, just a turd of a team. For as much as Will's been kind of locked in this year, he has the third least amount of moves. Only twenty nine. Yeah, he only beats out Kensley and Kevin. So, okay. Well, Brady, that gives you the eight spot. Uh, I guess he put it on a tee for you since he slid Will down. Yeah, I guess I gotta go Cody then. I, I this, this, this should have been this should have been Mitchell's spot, but he's yeah, I feel like yeah. he's coming up next. Yeah, and I'll have to put Mitchell at the seven because, like we said, so that's got Will and Mitchell below the seven. I think those are the two teams that you're okay with in the playoffs. But it gets dicey after here. So Austin, the sixth spot. Who's that team you're? Looking to catch in the is it yourself even I don't know I mean where are you feeling? Um, you know I, I think I'm better than a six right now, but you know, uh, if, if I'm looking at the rest, have y'all have y'all done Cody? Yeah, yeah. we we did Cody. Right, okay, I would just put uh Kingsley's team there, right at six. I think that's uh, fair. I think she still has a lot of sketchy players. Yeah, but you know I. I continually, I will say, I underestimate Freddie Freeman going into the year. I underestimate what uh, Austin Riley can do. So, and Justin Turner being good this year is really, really hurt. So, yeah, she has the like top two third baseman now. So that's exciting for the rest of the. League. I don't, I don't know if we have time, but he just mentioned the Red Sox. Did the Red Sox have anyone else they can sell? They already kind of sold. I haven't heard much about them. Yeah, I haven't heard much. They don't have anyone in the top 50 sales things. It's pretty much all yeah. Cardinals and Tigers and Mets. I guess maybe if Chris Sale was healthy, maybe they'd look to deal him, but he's not, so no one's going to trade for him. Apparently, Blake Snell's a contract guy. Yeah, him and Hater are free agents. That's why I, that's why the, the Padres are a big, like, who knows kind of thing. But all right, so, sorry to off-tangent. No, you're good. Um, 
Did you just put Kinsley there, Brady? No, Austin just put Kinsley there. So I will go after that. I'm going to put I'll put Hayden. Now, Kevin, I mean, he's still putting up like you can't we had like what third most points this week. He only lost because he played me. But fuck Kevin. I, I get it. I get it. But you got to kind of respect him. All right. You're putting Hayden at the five spot. Kind of disrespectful to the. New, it was. It, it, the, the, look, I, it, it, feels, it feels it feels weird to put him there, but it's like. There's two guys in this chat. I definitely put below Hayden. Yeah, I get that. I get that, right? And I, here's the thing. I would still put Kevin above Hayden, and I would still probably put you above Hayden, and I'm putting myself above. And then it was just kind of like, it was between Austin and Hayden, and Austin put up 300 this week, so I was just like, look at Hayden. Austin, uh, I love you. You made the top four, so I'm proud of you for that because you've not been peating your meat much of the season at seven and eight. <laughs> so uh, I got you at the four spots. So that moves you to the three. We are left with Brady, Kevin, and me. Um, at three, um, I'll just put Kevin there. I think Kevin just probably belongs at three. Um, and that gives Brady the beauty of two, and he gets to position himself where he wants to in the power rankings. Did we miss someone? Who who do we just put it for? Austin. Oh, he put himself. Okay, I put Austin there. So Kevin's at three, and now you're yeah. two between me and you. Uh, I'll put myself at two, and you can go one just because of consistency. My team still, you know, we can put up big points, but it's still sometimes quite volatile with the strikeouts so, on the team. So that's what I've noticed about my team. I don't think I have any three hundred point matchups, but if you look at like my last ten matchups, it's just two fifty every time. I'm just gonna yeah. go. I'm just gonna put up two forty, two fifty, and I think that's what you need for a playoff run. <sighs> It, the problem is, is when you play against the volatile team, when you hit in the wrong, the wrong week. And I, mean, I mean, like I, in my little like resurgence for three hundred points, it's okay. The three hundred point guy needed to move on. I'm not going to be able to match that. Yeah, I think yeah. you go out and give me two fifty each week. I'm feeling great. Yeah, I mean, in my little resurgence, so, you know, I put up high points, and then you know, I have a the one week against you, I put up two twelve. You know, so the uh. The strikeouts kill me sometimes. I feel you. But, well, that was a pretty, it's a different pod, a little slower pace. We had to analyze a lot in the league, you know. So, um, you guys tuning into this, come up with some more segment ideas for next week. Starting to run a little ragged here, heading into the playoffs. But once playoffs come, I'm excited to absolutely yeah. dump my teams. I mean, week before playoffs, we can obviously do like a playoff primer, talk about the matchups and whatnot. But, yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to that. But, awesome. <laughs> I appreciate you for joining us. Top score. I hope you keep it up. I always enjoy seeing you on the pod. And Brady, I'm wondering if you're going to become a consistent face up here. We said this like two months ago, and then your team's like, boom, good, boom, good. So I'm I'm hoping you're staying hot until playoffs. You need to simmer down and let me take the trophy this year. So well, I don't think I don't think I'll be catching you in the first round. I think I'll be in that middle zone there. So uh, Austin, you got any final words for the league? Uh, you know, am I playing you next week, Brady? Yeah, did you me next week? Mm. All right. Well, you're gonna get That's a big side action spoonful of Lance Lynn. We hit a little. And... We hitting a little side action. Yeah, we can we can hit some side action. I'll, I'll talk right. about it. We can hit some oh, side well, I'm looking forward to it. You guys are gonna have to update the chat on what the side bets are. But that is it for me. Thank you, guys. Austin's a D-backs fan now because the Mets are – Shout out D-backs. Shout uh, out Slow we, Readers Guild. I guess he's still a Closet Rockies fan and your Braves fan wearing a no, cup no, no. here. They are winning the whole thing. The Cincinnati Hunter Dials. The Cincinnati Double Dads. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.